Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today's video is on bartering, something that's been done since 6000 BC. It's been taking place for a very, very, very long time. And it's something that you really need to be prepared for because in an emergency situation, it could be the difference of life and death for you or if you have a family, your family. So how does the system work? Really the way the system works is you have to present something from whatever you are asking for. You approach a farmer, they have a dozen eggs. Now, what do you have that could equal the price of those dozen eggs? Let's assume that the money no longer is worth anything. You're using it to start your campfire. So what do you have in your arsenal? Or what do you have in your camp? What do you have in your house? What do you have that you could trade to the farmer in order to buy the eggs. Basically, you're trading one product for another product, and it has to be acceptable to him on the other end. Silver, so maybe having like silver and things of that nature could be something that could be used in a grid down SHTF type situation where you have to barter. So you have to come to an agreement, and once you come to that agreement, you pay him with whatever. It could be your own services. It could be with silver. It could be with batteries. It could be a flashlight. It could be whatever the other person is looking for that they need because they have something you need. But you may have something that they want. But don't bring all your things to the table. Bargain with them a little bit. At first, don't have everything with you. Unless maybe you have a few pieces of silver or something that you carry in your pocket for a rainy day, if you get what I'm saying. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about some of the things that could be good bargaining tools. We'll see. If you guys have some ideas, make sure you put them in the comments below. We all like to have everybody comment on some of these videos and stuff so everybody else kind of gets a whole idea of what everybody else's ideas are. Because that's what we're all about, right? It's just not my idea. You all got to put your two cents worth in. So comment below what would be something that would be a great bartering item that you have and why let's see so let's get started all right so some of some great bartering tools are always your basic supplies all right like i just mentioned before batteries batteries are a good bartering tool because maybe somebody has a flashlight maybe they have a radio maybe they have something they have to run off batteries and they need batteries see what i'm saying here it's on things that they need Maybe some type of like little flashlights or something like that. If it's a grid down HTF situation and there is no power, you're going to have to have light of some kind. So having a s small light, I'm sure that's why I tell people always make sure you have extra light. I have more lights than you can shake a stick at. And have extra ones because they're great little bartering tools. Tea lights. Now, you can get these tea lights, you can buy them online, really cheap, all right? But having these little dinky tea lights with batteries, and they're good to go, is another great little bartering tool. Because they'll stay lit for quite a long time. Now, lighters. Now, you may not have a bunch of big lighters, but if you do go to Walmart, all right, sometimes you can find... Uh, during certain times of the year, you can find these great, cheap lighters. The grill lighters. 
And sometimes they have them a bin. Now this year it'll be interesting to see what the prices are, but they used to be 98 cents. Now, I bought a whole bunch of them. I got a ton of these bad boys. For 98 cents, can't go wrong. Matches. Your standard wooden stick matches. These things go a long way. Now you can get these in all different size boxes. Now like this one here is like a 300. All right, so there's 300 matches in here. You can buy the single packs where there's like, what is it, like 50 matches or so or something in the box. <clears throat> but matches, if it's a grid down SHTF situation, more than likely people will be cooking with wood, fire, whatever they find to burn, if you get what I'm saying. But they need some way to light it because not everybody has the knowledge on lighting a fire without matches or a lighter. They don't have all the other different tools in their toolbox to make sure that they can produce fire. So they're going to need a lighter and matches. Speaking of fire, fire starting bricks. Now these are the ones that you can just take and this one you just light the whole package and you get a fire going. Plain and simple. So if wood is damp or anything like that, it's been raining and stuff like this, and people are trying to get fires going and this kind of stuff. They're going to be seeking out things of this nature because maybe they have food and stuff. They have some, you know, they have stuff they could cook, but they got to get a fire going first, right? So having some of these fire starters, single serve fire starters, could go a long way. Now, <clears throat> let's move into some fuels, you know, like little sterno cans. You used to be able to buy these pretty cheap. I don't know how much they are now, but I'm scared to go look. But these little sterno cans, you light these things. These things will burn for a very, very long time. You know, and you can cook a lot of things over a sterno. Having some portable propane, the small little one pound tanks. Now you wouldn't be, you know, unless you need something major, you're not going to like, you know, barter with one of your 20 pound tanks or something. But these little bad boys here, you might be able to barter with all right as you notice we're just covering some basic stuff here <clears throat> citronella candles one they get light and two if it's a grid down shtf situation and if for some reason you're not in your home anymore or you these will keep the bugs and stuff away if you're out in the woods definitely these are something you'd want to use I don't know if you'd light these and put them in your house because the fumes could be kind of deadly. So I wouldn't suggest doing that. But if you're not in your house and you're out in the woods and you're trying to survive or in an open air area, these things will come in handy because the bugs are going to get bad really quick. Now, let's move over to my little secret toast here. Let me move some of this stuff out of the way real quick like well TP for the bunghole right I mean there you go TP will always come in handy and will always be a great bartering tool no matter what you do because most people won't have toilet paper they won't have wipes they won't have anything like that you know, and they're going to get tired of wiping their rear end with a corn cob, if you get what I'm saying. So you'll get a long ways with toilet paper and wipes. Okay, folks? So having an extra ain't going to hurt anything. Now, I'm not telling you to go out and buy out the whole store. All right? That's not what I'm saying to do. What I'm saying is it wouldn't hurt to have a few extra packs just put away on the chance that you need to barter with somebody. Now let's move to my, what I call, this is my barter box. This is where I keep the goodies that people are going to probably want. All right, now, you can go to any store and you can buy these single serve or two serving freeze dried meals. This just so happens to be a mountain house Depending on where you go, you can buy different ones. Sometimes you can get them anywhere between seven and eleven bucks. Just depends. All right, but these 
are great single serve like bartering tools because they're getting a full meal, sometimes two meals in a pouch so they could feed two people. And if you're hungry, that means a lot if you get what I'm saying. So buying some of these and have them in your barter box is key, folks. Now, something else that you probably want to think about is investing in instant coffee. I buy these Folgers, all right, these Folgers right here, they're the single serve. I buy these things when I see them, especially if once in a while I catch them on sale, well, at least I used to, and I catch them on sale, and you take these things, just store them away. Okay, right, it's instant coffee, it probably tastes like crap. But if you are a coffee drinker, you need coffee every morning. So having some of these and so, these little single serve little packs, people could really do just about whatever you want if they're dying for coffee or they're gonna trade, all right? So these things come in handy right here. Any type of an energy bar, however you wanna do it. These just so happen, I talked about these in my backpack video I just did last week. All right, these are the new millennium. Um, these things have a four to five year shelf life on them. They are vacuum packed. They're also heat resistant because they're made for backpacking. All right, so they're heat resistant and everything else and they last for four to five years. All right, folks, you buy them right online, something great to have. I mean, if somebody's starving, there you go. Now, let's get into the meat and potatoes here. All right. <clears throat> you all know how I like to do all my, my dry goods and my rice and, and all that kind of stuff, and I break things down. Well, this is why. This is the barter box. I do all my rice for my barter box. One cup, vacuum sealed. All right. There's a whole ton of them in here. All right, so if I wanted to trade for something or I needed to barter for something, having a good staple like rice will go a long ways, especially beans. Now, you can do whatever kind of beans you want. I have, these are uh, the split peas. These are black beans. I have pinto beans and rice in my barter box. All right, I also keep, as I showed you when I did my vacuum sealing video with the tricks to do this, all right, I keep in here sugar, I keep flour, salt, and another flour. All right, so these things, are really great to barter with. It's what you want to have in your barter box. Okay, folks? You see, you put all that in there. This is just food products. But food is what people are looking for. Now, another great thing that you can do, I don't have it up here on the table, but yes, I am out in my garage. If you have extra tools, say you have three hammers, well, if somebody's looking for a hammer or they need a hammer for something and you're going to trade, you know, there you go. I mean, that's a good thing. And you still have another hammer or two. If you have four or five screwdrivers, you see where I'm going with this, folks? If you have extra tools that you could turn around and barter with, it is a give me. I mean, this is just what people will be looking for. So put in the comments below, what are some of the things that you would put in your barter box? I am uh, in the process, I, after I put my barter box together, I did realize that I want to go get some little bottles of alcohol. The little nips, as you call them. You know, you used to be able to buy them for a couple of bucks in the store. Lord knows what they're going to charge me now. But the little nips, and I can put those right in here because a lot of them are either in plastic bottles and stuff nowadays. They don't do so much glass anymore. And put those right in here because a little shot of alcohol will definitely go a long ways. 
So I have survival preparedness for beginners. Make sure that everybody comments on this video and put in there what you would like to put in your barter box or what you have that you would barter with. So this way here, everybody in the community is going to get a pretty good idea on the things that they would need to use in an emergency situation if all of a sudden the almighty dollar took a dump and now what do we do? You got to start bartering with the things you have in your arsenal, in your house, in your backpack. It could be whatever, but you have to have things to do it with, right? So until next time, folks, you all stay safe. You keep prepping. Build those barter boxes because these, these bad boys could save your life in the very near future if everything keeps going the way it's going. You get what I'm saying, folks? Be prepared now, not later. So until next time, I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. I'll catch all of you on the flip side. Thumbs up, baby. Mm -hmm.